Snipers, you have to see what's happening under the Bitcoin price this Friday as we are officially above the $50,000 resistance level, but we're not seeing the follow through that we'd expect to see if Bitcoin was truly ready to reach 58,000 US dollars. So I want to talk about some potential downside scenarios coming into the weekend where it's the most manipulated and we do have to address what's happening to Ethereum, of course, because notice here how we are also reaching this area where in the past it has indicated Ethereum is overbought. And we know that inside of this channel is usually the fair market value for Ethereum. And anytime we've come above this channel, we've seen a drop at least back inside of the channel or sometimes below the channel where Ethereum becomes oversold. And so this has actually caused us to take a short position right around for those in the discord. I sent that out today. It's already hit all targets. I currently have my stop at break even for that. But I want to talk about what would happen if Bitcoin did topple over for the short term, at least into this weekend. How is Ethereum going to react to this? Are we still going to see strength for Ethereum against Bitcoin? Because that's a huge puzzle piece on the table. And we do have this bullish daily candle that closed. But we have to realize that when it comes to Ethereum and the Bitcoin chart, others dominance the Ethereum dominance chart, those could go up and down regardless of if price is going up or down. So what we really want to monitor here is if Ethereum is going to be showing more strength than Bitcoin, are we going to be seeing some new yearly highs for the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart? Because we are at resistance right now. So if we don't see new highs, what if we are forming just another lower high before seeing some downside? It's on the table, right? Or we could be doing the opposite and do a higher high, right? But coming into the weekend already with Bitcoin not seeing momentum at 50,000 as we'd expect to see when you're breaking a major resistance level, we do need to talk about these downside scenarios. And then we'll look at some of the other charts like the altcoins outside of Ethereum and Bitcoin. Now that we're going to start isolating Ethereum and then talk about how traditional markets close for the week. So we have an idea of how institutions are putting their capital to work coming into this weekend. And so let's first talk about what's happening here to Bitcoin, of course, on the daily chart so far. We can't say much of the daily candle today. Yes, we formed some new highs, but at the end of the day, we're not seeing follow through and, and follow through would come in the sense of volume. And if we look at the daily volume so far, we're not necessarily seeing more volume than we saw yesterday. It's just kind of starting to even out here. And that is a slight concern for me just because of the fact that we have to realize we're in a very sensitive spot above this 200 day moving average sitting right at that forty six thousand dollar level with Bitcoin just kind of starting to curve like this. It's not looking too well coming into this weekend. So if we break forty nine thousand seven hundred once again, then we could assume Bitcoin is going to come right back down to the forty four thousand eight hundred to forty nine thousand seven hundred dollar range and stay within this range for maybe a couple more days, a couple more weeks. Who knows? But what I do know is if forty nine thousand seven hundred isn't able to hold and it truly starts to act like a resistance, then we need to monitor forty four thousand eight hundred at this point. And there are so many different things going on in this range, like the weekly open, the monthly open, the previous weekly open between forty nine thousand seven hundred and forty four thousand eight hundred that we can't really make much of. We even have the 200 day moving average here. So we really have to keep forty four thousand eight hundred as that mindset barrier for Bitcoin to not cross below if we want to assume any further upside with Bitcoin not necessarily seeing the follow through yet at 50,000. Now, if we see follow through, we start to see some actual volume come in. We need to start getting towards this fifty four thousand dollar level so that if we come back down, we can test forty nine thousand as a support rather than a resistance. And then we can talk about the upside scenario of Bitcoin seeing new all time highs. But right now we have to be like Bruce Lee and adapt to what's happening. And yes, we started to see the follow through, but now we're seeing weakness. And because of that, you know, we took a short on Ethereum. I wouldn't be shorting Bitcoin right now with dominance so oversold. But what we do want to monitor right now is this forty nine thousand seven hundred dollar level because that will open the door to forty four thousand eight hundred potentially. And then forty four thousand eight hundred is the real level that would be a make it or break it when it comes to Bitcoin's price action here. And it's going to be interesting because with Ethereum, we still haven't necessarily gotten our Bitcoin dominance and others dominance prediction tested because Bitcoin hasn't really toppled over in any way. And we're assuming that when this does happen, that Bitcoin dominance starts to see strength. It's going to be when Bitcoin is not necessarily showing as much upside because that could cause fear and be the narrative behind Bitcoin dominance increasing. And so 
if we do see 49,700 break, we also want to start looking at how is the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart reacting to this? That's going to lead other altcoins potentially, but we also have to take a slightly isolated approach with Ethereum as well, because realize that it's also institutionally graded, just like Bitcoin. It has CME futures and so forth. It's the only altcoin that has that. So I wouldn't be considering it an altcoin anymore, which is why this chart that factors in the coins outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum and of course the stable coins is more important to watch now because notice how we had this slight top here from the you know initial end of altcoin season when Bitcoin topped out where there was this area where we're currently sitting at 35.22% dominance that was very hard for this chart to get above and so we acted in resistance once twice a third time a fourth time and yeah we saw this kind of like top formation above that but we've never really seen candles get back to those highs and we're finding now resistance already at this level it's starting to look like this is becoming either a ceiling or a level that's going to break this chart to the upside if this starts to break down we already have these higher highs forming and sort of a bear flag that's going to be a huge puzzle piece for altcoins outside of bitcoin and ethereum i don't think this would be tested until bitcoin sees downside either so we either stay above 49,700 or not with the Ethereum dominance chart, it's a little bit of a different scenario. We're not finding as much resistance at these areas that we've found resistance in the past. We're actually playing inside of the range that we need to be playing in if we want to assume further upside. So that's why we're going to start isolating this Ethereum dominance chart away from all the, uh, all the other altcoins. And of course, Bitcoin dominance will have to continue monitoring this. I don't see this rising unless Bitcoin sees downside. Uh, and we are testing some previous lows here. And, and so Bitcoin is really testing the market right now, in my opinion, in a lot of different ways, not just in price, but with its dominance right now. And then look at silver against Ethereum breaking into new low territories that it's never been at before. That means the value of Ethereum exceeding the value of silver without the US dollar value attached to that equation. It's seeing a break right now. Is this going to just kind of slingshot back, assuming Ethereum sees downside? Or is this actually going to see like a crazy breakdown where Ethereum just breaks 4,000? A lot of that will have to do with how Bitcoin reacts to 49,700. So traditional markets, the DXY is at a major support closing the week. That assumes that we could see some upside soon. Maybe on Monday, maybe on Turner on Tuesday. The weekend's obviously not going to show up because it's closed, but we're not breaking the support we're sitting at support so same way we were sitting at resistance when we closed the previous week that gave us opportunity to come down now it's the opposite the tables have flipped so is this the last draw before dxy pushes up and then we see traditional markets start to fall the s p 500 and then bitcoin potentially following that well gold is seeing strength ending the week indicating institutions look at this new highs here Institutions are fearful of keeping their capital in traditional markets. If they're fearful to keep their capital in traditional markets, they're sure as hell going to be fearful to keep, keep it in cryptocurrencies for the most part. Not maybe Bitcoin, which is why dominance would move up if we start to see traditional markets topple over and Bitcoin also follow that path in price, but maybe not in dominance. And so that's really the thesis and storyline we're going to maintain to cover over the next few days on this channel. Um, you know, really the dominance levels. And Bitcoin's reaction to 49,700, we're going to find this out here real soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you all for tuning into the Snipers channel today. Until next time, Snipers.